What's up weekenders, welcome back to Grand Prix World, thank you so much for joining me. Um, last time out we took a look at the driver situation and we had some thoughts. And when we had those thoughts, uh, those thoughts coalesced into a plan. So I have a plan, can you believe it? I can't. Um, with the help of Mr Casino, uh, who was the only person to express much of an opinion either way, um, we've made some some decisions. Now, they do depend on a few things. One thing is us signing Patronus. And if I sound a little bit odd, you have to forgive me, because I have just recorded this episode and <laughs> and the game crashed. So we're redoing everything, um, because I was looking at the, the balance of videos and I realised you're getting a lot of ZedCom uh, recently and not quite so much Grand Prix World, so today's ZedCom will be cancelled because I'm having to re-record this. I've just lost 40 minutes work. Blah. Anyway, enough complaining. Um, so what we decided on was to... Denis is not out of the running completely, but it seems most likely that uh, we've taken on a distinctly Teutonic flavour with uh, Heintal Frentzen, our preferred target for the number one driver role. Uh, supporting him, uh, ideally would be Alexander Wurt, and Carl Eisen will be staying in the test seat. Uh, Fisichella is an outsider, um, if we can't for whatever reason get Frentzen, and that reason's most likely going to be that he's going to win the championship this season, which boosts his wage demands. Um, if for any reason we can't get Frentzen, then uh, we bump uh, Wurt into that first driver role and support him with Fisichella most likely. However, the ideal goal would be um, to go for this German-Austrian combination, which ties in very, very nicely with the three-year Red Bull deal. And we can challenge ourselves further by then deciding, I suppose, to pursue a uh, partnership with Mercedes-Benz and to seek out, where possible, not that there's that many of them, the german of sponsors uh, up and down here and kind of take things to the next level in terms of, of challenge. Uh, the other thing that was left hanging was what to do about the factory. And uh, obviously I have concerns about liquidity, which you might think are a bit stupid at the moment, but you have to, you have to remember that uh, it can creep up on you, it really can. And <clears throat> it's not in my nature to make decisions where uh, there's a significant chance that it'll end the game simply because you know we all want to see uh, see this through for the the full ten seasons. However, kind of the whole point of me making this uh, this season season series uh, is to demonstrate how the game works. And the only way you're going to fully understand how the game works is rather than me just saying stuff will happen, you have to kind of see it for yourself. So we're gonna build that factory. The other argument for that factory is of course that we have some very talented people joining the team next season and they are going to provide the biggest benefit possible with the biggest team possible and we can't afford to, I mean we literally cannot afford to bump the factory two levels but we can one which should boost our staff numbers accordingly. Um, what we're going to do actually is already begin to strengthen the departments ahead of these people arriving. Um, nice. So we have a, we have a strategy. Um, now I will give you some spoilers um, while I build spare parts. In the last episode, we actually had a bit of luck. Uh, we got a third place and a fourth place. And that was enough to open out an eight-point lead over Jordan, which is exactly what we needed. We're going to get totally different results now. Completely different. But one thing that we did do that I'm going to repeat is we're going to do some mad testing. Um, completely full-on crank it to the max testing, because this is our last opportunity to do testing on that scale. I'm going to move Carl into car 3 and we're going to drop one of our spare parts getting car 3 back in the game so that we can, as I say, maximise testing. And we're going to focus really on our Evolution 9 Ferrari engine. 
and we're going to get as many points into that engine as we can. Um, right, so we're going to put him 60% on the engine. 20% there, 10% up here, actually 70% on the engine I think is reasonable. Um, we've also got an extra few percent of our mechanics working on the engine program as well. Let's smash that. Perfect, we've got the maximum number of points possible, which I didn't last time, I'll confess. Let's. Now you may be wondering, maximum points, why are we being screwed here? Um, it comes down to facilities and the head of department and all kinds of different things. Basically our technology level at the factory is not high enough to get maximum extraction out of that. However, four points is still pretty significant. Um, so we're going to, first of all, reduce the weight, increase the responsiveness, increase the power to maximum, and increase the fuel economy. And now that engine, that EVO 9 engine is looking pretty fantastic. The good thing is as well that the power and the responsiveness are really going to come into play in Austria, which is exactly when this um, specification of engine will be prepared for. Um, now on the sponsor front, again this is cheating. This is technically cheating because um, I know what's going to happen, but um, on certain things at least. Magneti Morelli are talking to somebody else. Even though no one's inviting them to a Grand Prix, it is something that is happening. So instead, what we're going to do is begin talking to somebody else. Because otherwise, uh, it was after round 10, they signed to uh, another team, I forget who, and dicked us over. SO put up a fight, as I recall. Um, but regardless, we need to continue making friends. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kick SO out and I'm going to bring Red Bull. Actually, no, 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 no. I'll bring Red Bull to Austria. That's the home Grand Prix. And we want to obviously keep our relationship with Red Bull as good as possible, even though they've already committed to give us all the money that they're going to. Uh, let's get the cars race ready and then I think we can crack on. Both. And both. Now, do we have full... F yes, we do. I'm going to spend those points next round. Um, because once the car has a round in the, uh, the model building stage, uh, we can basically finish it in a single round if for whatever reason we fall short on that bar and then we can get it into the wind tunnel for round 10 already round 10 round 11 or 12 the entire process should be complete and we should have the best car we're capable of producing which none of us expected and we've only been able to do that by uh, basically suspending uh, development on this year's car but once we've done that and these bars are as full as possible we can maybe squeeze out another driver aid which is going to benefit us in the future. Okay, so the sponsors are sponsored and the cars are card and the drivers are moderately competent. I'm going to keep everyone where they are. Uh, now, setup. What to do on setup? I think I'm going to start focusing actually on just the sheer performance attributes. I think it's the right thing to do. And we're also, even though the hard tie doesn't always work, we're going to go for split strategy. Um, because the weather's randomized, what I learned last time doesn't matter, but last time out, the hard tire didn't qualify well, but actually got Nakano a third place uh, in Britain. And the reason that we're splitting our strategy is I'd rather... Um, I'd rather increase the chance of having one driver in a good points paying position than uh, you know than have the risk that neither of them get there. Now of course that same chance could put them both in the points, but it's better for the sake of consistency to continually have one driver in a points paying position until the end of the season if we're able to to do that. 
and also you know we need to get the points now because uh, round 10 the new specification of Jordan will be out if they've built one which I suspect they have and that's going to cause us to suffer at the hands of our nearest rivals so I think it's the right thing to do we're going to start looking for traction control on the Stuart they've got something that's boosting their performance let's go dancing 17 degrees and cloudy with a very strong wind and Deniz qualifies 8th, Nakano qualifies 10th so the deficit uh, this time out wasn't so bad uh, last time it was the other way around, this time Rubens Barrichello puts it on pole ahead of his teammate Heinz Alfredson by about a tenth of a second uh, Johnny Newhouse puts it 3rd for McLaren, Damon Hills Benetton 4th the Jordans line up 5th and 6th and Esteban Tuero 7th, Jordan have really come on song uh, and I think they're only going to get stronger whereas Benetton have gone the other way which is surprising actually Benetton continued to sort of teeter on the edge of, uh, of greatness and it's strange because they've got all the ingredients they've got a full sponsor package, they've got works Mercedes power, they've got a works, uh, a works Goodyear deal uh, it doesn't make any sense to me that they're not leading at least the McLarens home uh, Ricardo Rossick continues a strong season at Stewart by splitting the arrows meanwhile down in loser town uh, Johnny Herbert and John Fissi Keller prop up the grid behind Schumacher's Williams He's him and Irvine continue to have a really bad season at Williams uh, Tyrrell seem to have made some gains over Sauber, so good news for them, but arguably uh, you've got to feel sorry for Sauber, I think. 20 degrees, uh, very dry, but with a very strong wind, so it's hard to read how those uh, conditions are, are going to affect the car, to be honest. Uh, we'll put fresh boots on Deniz for every stint. And it'll be a 30-30 split for Nakano, as you might be expecting. Ah, damn it. No podium this time, and instead double points finish for Jordan. Deniz finishes just outside the points in 7th. That's a real kick in the bollocks. Rubens Barrichello wins from pole. Uh, Johnny Newhouse takes second. The bottom step of the podium goes to Jean Alaise's Jordan. Heinz Howard Frentzen goes backwards in the race, surprisingly. Um, finishes uh, just ahead of Alexander Wurtz's Jordan. And uh, Montemini gets a Stewart in the points. So again, the Stewarts continuing to show uh, an interesting split between quality, quality pace and race pace. Nakano had an accident, which was the last thing we needed him to do. Um, because we don't have the spare parts to deal with deal with damage. Uh, engine failures for the Tyrrell of Toro Takagi and the Prost of Alessandro Marini uh, as well as an engine failure for Eddie Irvine's Williams. Damon Hill had a driver mistake to take him out of the race. This is bad news bears for us. Um, that closes the gap uh, between us and Jordan to a very very insignificant three points. Um, yeah bad news bears. On the good news front, though, the Peugeot works deal is done, so that's 11 million in the bank. Uh, we're going to take back some points from them. Someone, someone we spent 20% on a sign with someone else. Patronus, that didn't happen last time. God damn it! That is really bad. That is really bad. Um, let's see if we can't get FedEx. I'm not confident, but we have to do what we can. Uh, the partner deal is ready for Bridgestone. Uh, I'm not going to bother negotiating particularly hard with them. I'll leave 5% on the deal. Uh, this 20% we're going to put on another cash sponsor and I'm just going to have to hope against hope that we can snatch ourselves a, uh, a multi-year deal. There we go. Hewlett-Packard are actually interested in a two-season deal. So that's definitely something that's appealing to us. And let's go for Bic. And we're going to completely change up how we're doing things here. Um, we are going to invite Hewlett Packard, first of all, uh, Bic, and FedEx. I'm not bothering with SO, I'm not bothering with Bridgestone. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll drop Bic for now and bring Red Bull. 
just so we're still friends. Peugeot, while it would be good to have the um, the control over the development program, I really do see it as a one-year deal, so we might spend another year in the wilderness. I don't know. Depends what the level of support for us is. I'm leaving 15% on the deal, and we'll do the best we can, but it's getting very late in the game uh, this season to do much about about that. And last time out, obviously, we just had a podium, so I could spend a success card to draw them in. But nevertheless, um, our budget has more than doubled year on year. Uh, we now look like this. So that's something. Um, Bridgestone really do not like us. <laughs> they really do not like us. They've just signed a deal with us and they're already unhappy. PIAA are our best mates, as are Red Bull. Um, Peugeot, uh, got a good relationship with them, but we have spent a lot of time nurturing that. And Telecom Argentina are very indifferent, but whatever, they're tied into a deal till 2002, so that's their mistake. It's impossible to keep them all happy unless you're winning every race anyway, and doing a, a fair rotation, which is kind of hard to, to actually balance out when you're negotiating for new deals. Our Evolution 9 engine should have arrived, which is something. Let's see if we can't strengthen our department some more ahead of next season. Um, nice. We're going to fire four below average and replace them with two very good and two experts in the mechanics department. In construction, uh, we're going to do the same thing. There's a chance we'll get sued, but I think it's worth it. Uh, in design, we're going to drop 20 grand on a headhunter. No, nope, nobody. But there is someone very good, so we'll make a switch there. And commercial will do the same. Get a headhunter on the job. No, nothing. Okay, no biggie. No biggie. Uh, over here, uh, yeah, exactly what happened last time has happened again. We're one point short on the stage. And I know what you're thinking, we could just steamroll ahead or give it another round but it, given how much we've gained it's just such a waste that I'm going to spend our testing points on it but first of all we're going to start a project for active suspension and we're going to move 20% of the staff over to work on that now the efficiency is back up on the project um, I don't think it's going to hamper us too much so let's do that nice and now the car can already go into the wind tunnel for Austria. And I'm going to save the game in case it crashes again, so I'll be with you in a moment. Sit tight. Welcome back. Um, right, so we're now on the Evo 9 Ferrari engine. All looking good there. No new compounds, no new fuel, because no one loves us. Um, we have to invest solely in spare parts. That's what has to happen. And we also have to hope against hope that... Actually, before I spend those last points there, how bad is the damage on the Carnot's car? 7%! What a jerk! What a jerk. I mean, I suppose it's not so bad because he's only 10% worn. I'm kind of wondering if, again, though, I have to spend the money building another chassis just so I don't have to worry so much about about our ability to produce spare parts. <clears throat> it's half a million. It would leave us with three spare parts though. I'm gonna do it. It's it's technically very irresponsible, but I'm gonna do it regardless. Excellent. So Nakano doesn't get that new car. He doesn't deserve it. Nakano can inherit car 4 from Deniz. I think that's fair. We're, go we're not going to repair car 3. We're going to save that extra spare pot. Uh, excuse me. And we're going to run a much more conservative test program. Because you'll notice we are starting to lose money. Which is exactly what I thought would happen. We should be losing somewhere in the region of 350,000 per round now. Um, plus anything else that we spend between rounds. Uh, we're going to do 
let's call it 200 miles um, of paid testing. So we're spending a quarter of a million extra as well. So we spent three quarters of a million um, just on the screen, really. Uh, we're going to, we'll do some more testing here, actually. And yeah, it's not great, but let's do what we can. We got all the setup points, which is the main thing, and we get we got one point to spend on uh, an Evo 10 engine. We're going to do that. And no point saving the points this late in the season. We need all the help we can get. Let's go for. Um, I forget which round comes after Austria. Hmm. I forget. Well, I tell you what. Let's go for. Reliability, make sure that new power doesn't actually unsettle things. We now need to repair car 4 and car 1. Bugger, I didn't think that through, did I? Never mind. Never mind. Um, yeah, we're just going to have to do it. We need the points. We need the points. We can't afford to, to lose out here. Um, I think everything else is where we want it to be. So let's dance, kids. Again, on the setup, we're going to focus on the performance attributes, not on specialist attributes, which can obviously deliver a huge benefit, but uh, it's just too hard to read, to be honest, at this point. Uh, but we are going to deploy the Evolution 9 engine on both cars. There's no reason to hold back. It's not like it's a specification provided by Ferrari. It's one that, well, it is provided by Ferrari, but it's one we've developed for our own car, so there's not a chance that the next Evolution is actually a step backwards for us or creates more problems than it solves. Uh, still not found any traction control on the Stewart. Doesn't mean it's not there, just that, you know, the dice roll wasn't in our favour. Let's go to Austria where the hills are very much alive. 23 degrees, light rain and a strong wind. That gives us a chance um, potentially to use our aero specification wet weather tyre. But we'll see. Okay, yeah, we're qualifying on intermediate tyres, which means, yeah, strong performance for Deniz. <laughs> and that's exactly what I thought because his wet weather capability is quite good. And that has really mixed up the grid, actually. Damien Hill puts it on pole for Benetton, which is fantastic. Heinz Howell Frentzen's uh, season continues to impress, uh, putting his Ferrari second. Third goes to Jean Alaise's Jordan, so we've been out qualified by the Jordan again. Uh, we really need to uh, do what we can to mitigate any gains the Jordans make. Uh, Pedders puts it on fourth. Uh, Mick Hacken has the qualifying of a lifetime for him, uh, well, within this game at least. Uh, he's 5th for Prost, David Coulthard 6th for McLaren, Alexander Voort 7th for Jordan, Michael Schumacher's best qualifying of the season for Williams, 8th position, Shinji Nakano 9th and Rubens Barrichello round out the top 10. Who are the victims here? Uh, it looks to me... oh, Johnny Herbert failed to qualify but was allowed to take part and both Tyrrells failed to qualify. So there'll only be 20 starters uh, the next round. People to suffer, uh, Andrea Montemini, Ricardo Rosset and Esteban Tuero, both Stuarts and Benetton there, suffering quite badly. And Johnny Newhouse and Rubens Barrichello both had days to forget. 28 degrees, cloudy, so it's no longer wet. We're on the dry tyre, which is not going to work in our favour anymore. But at least the tyres are all fresh and new. Going to split Nakano 36-35 on the hard tyre and hope that there's gains to be made there. Let's see what this engine can do. It's podium time. <laughs> it's podium time, kiddies. Uh, it's a third position. That's brilliant. Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Uh, double points for us. Uh, I couldn't have asked for more than that, really. Damon Hill takes his first win for Benetton. Uh, 129, 36, 482. That's great news for them. They've always been on the verge of delivering, and it's about time they got something to show for it. 
David Coulthard puts it second for McLaren. Uh, Arrows Ferrari of Pedro Dunn is, is third. Fourth goes to Shinji Nakano, Arrows Ferrari. Ferrari Ford of Rubens Barrichello is fifth. And the McLaren Mercedes of Johnny Newhouse sits sixth, taking the last points paying position. From the race, we lost Esteban Tuero, Frentzen, uh, Alexander Wurtz is Jordan, Johnny Herbert Sauber to an accident. Uh, John Lace is Jordan to an engine failure, and Giancarlo Fisichella Salba to a driver error. It's good that both Jordans failed to score. That is pleasing to me. Pedro Nunes six sixth on 18 points. Shinji Nakano holds on to 8th position with 10 points. In the constructors, where it all matters, we've opened up a gap of 10 points to Jordan, and we would have closed the gap to Benetton quite significantly were it not for Hill's win. Ferrari continued to lead pretty convincingly, uh, but that we really needed that. That could just save that fourth position for us. Let's see what's going on in Sponsor World. We've got that success card. That is good news indeed. Ah, FedEx will offer us a multi-year deal for 2.2 million. I think I know where that success card is going. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Hewlett Packard and Bic have both signed with other people, so that's completely screwed us over. Um, so instead, I guess we will talk to Mastercard, possibly. Magneti Morelli are still in the game. Let's put fifteen percent on Magneti Morelli and fifteen percent can go towards MasterCard. Not that I think we'll get them. And we're gonna drop that card on the multi year FedEx deal simply because I could use it to get benefits here for one season, but but just, I, I th I'd much rather have sponsors in the bag for a strong push with new drivers in 2002. So that's what we're going to do here. Who's no longer traveling? Oh, it's someone who's signed elsewhere. We're going to no longer take Red Bull, and instead we're going to bring MasterCard. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, it's now a two-season customer deal with Esso. That's not really what I was hoping for, but we'll take it. Um, it's tyres, really, that are now holding us back, this constant reliance on a partner deal. And it's really annoying, actually, because um, we... There are no Works Bridgestone partners, they're just not prepared to deal with... Oh no, Sauber have Works Bridgestone. But all the other teams really are on Goodyear. What we really need to shake things up will be Michelin to enter, but I don't see it happening. Let's see if we can't strengthen the department any further. Uh, we can. Uh, I'm going to have to fire some apprentices. We've got no star workers, so it makes no difference. Let's drop four apprentices there. That goes against my own playstyle, really, but... Uh, the headhunters, again, have found no one. Uh, what you'll notice is we lost 883,000 last round, but a bulk of that will actually be because we built a new chassis. Over in Newstown, uh, first uh, pole position and a win for... Damon Hill. Um, Pedro Diniz is unhappy uh, with his third position and wants more. Arrows have signed a works deal with Persia, which we have. Both cars in top six. Jordan have signed a uh, works Ferrari power again. That's very interesting. Uh, both McLaren's broke the top six too. Bick have distanced themselves from Arrows and signed with Sauber. Hewlett Packard have distanced from us and signed with Benetton. Uh, so we're losing out on both fronts there. And again, that's partly because we have a small factory and a small team. Brother have signed with Minardi. Diversity Lever went to Prost. Catchier Solutions to Stewart. And Camozzi went to Tyrrell. Uh, 
fantastic race starts for both McLarens, which means they're on traction control. And Dave Richards wins manager of the round. Good on you, Dave. That last race was very easy going on the old uh, wear and tear. Uh, we have suffered a bit there. So I'm going to go back to 100% of our guys. We want this chassis ready by, by round 12. Absolutely we do. Ah, Ferrari have brought out uh, a specification of engine which Jordan will now be using, I imagine. Although it's nothing on our specification 10 engine, which is labelled 11 because Ferrari screwed us. Um, no new tyres, no new fuel. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, I think, I think we're in a good position, I suppose, for the end of season push. Again, next season we're going to be hampered mostly by the fact that we have no control over our tyre compounds. And as anyone who watches Formula One will know, it's very much a tyre formula. It it always has been. And by not being able to develop our own tyres, that really sucks. Uh, it also appears that we're probably not going to be able to develop our own engine formulas the way we're going. And we're going to be hampered by uh, Esso as well. Although it is a good middle-of-the-road supplier, I just don't expect us to get very much out of it. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me. I hope you're having a wicked weekend so far. Uh, I'll probably see you tomorrow for some more Grand Prix World. Maybe we can push through to the end of the season, have a bit of a monster episode together. Otherwise, stay out of trouble. Well, not too much.